sometimes the misconception is that the wife just stays at home all the time and, and that's her duty. So within Islam, what are the actual roles of the man and the wife? We are talking about a balanced life. Let's go back to the era of Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hazrat Abu Darda radiallahu anhu was an Ansari Sahabi, a, a Medina citizen. And uh, Hazrat Salman Farsi migrated from Iran to Mecca and embraced Islam over there and then migrated to Medina and became a uh, muhajir as well. And he was made brother of Hazrat Abu Darda radiallahu anhu by Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Hazrat <coughs> Salman Farsi understood the philosophy of Islam and the balanced life Islam teaches. Mm -hmm. He went inside the house of Hazrat Abu Darda radiallahu anhu and then he found the house is in total mess and uh, Mrs. Abu Darda, she was moving around uh, in a very shaky uh, dress and uh, it's, a, it's a very shabby situation she was in. And then uh, Hazrat uh, Salman Farsi radiallahu anhu learned that Hazrat Abu Darda is voluntarily fasting today. He's not going to take part in the meal which, ha which was offered to Hazrat Salman Farsi mm -hmm. radiallahu anhu. Then uh, he said, Kul inni saimun. Hazur, Hazrat uh, Salman Farsi said, no, I'm not going to take fu uh, food until you break your voluntary imbalanced fasting. And then he was forced to break his voluntary fasting. Mm. And then um, uh, Abu Darda an Anu's wife said that your brother Abu Darda has got nothing to do with me. He is always calling his Allah and doing his ibadat right. and he has got no business with me whatsoever. Hazrat uh, Salman Farsi noted this point and he went to bed early and he saw uh, within one hour or two Hazrat uh, Abu Darda is waking up to start his tahajjud prayers. Mm -hmm. Hazrat Salman Farsi said this is not the time for tahajjud prayers, sleep and take rest. Then after two hours again he sees that Hazrat Abu Darda is not sleeping anymore and he is now ready, getting ready for tahajjud. He says no, not even now, the time has not come. Then after that, he sees that Hazrat Abu Darda is so tired mm. that he's oversleeping. He wakes him up and says, this is the time to pray tahajjud. Yep. In the Fajr time, mm. he complain, lodges a complaint against Hazrat Salman Farsi to Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you have given me a brother named Salman Farsi, but he has been teaching me new religion. Mm. <laughs> I thought I was doing well in Islam. Hazur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Sadaqa Salmano. وَلِنَفْسِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقٌّ وَلِزَوْجِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقٌّ وَآتِ كُلَّ زِي حَقٍ حَقَّهُ Whatever Salman has given you as a verdict, has given you correctly. Because your own self has a right on, upon your own self. Mm. And your wife has a right upon you. So give all the people and all the concerned people their own rights. Yeah, no, that's, Ensure that's that. A, so that's that's that is the balanced way. Yeah, that's a very uh, valid point. Okay, all right, I think we touched on some really interesting topics there about the different Islamic uh, roles of the husband and wife. We've got some points of the audience. I just want to take a few quickly. Yeah, Kalim Sal. I think this, sometimes this is misinterpreted uh, as a sub's point because it makes it seem as if Islam has a very kind of rigid patriarchal uh, uh, structure to it. In actual fact, when you look at it, the family structure is matriarchal. You know, paradise lies at the feet of the mother. The rahmi rishte, which we say, are the, are the mother's relatives, the mother's brothers and so on. They're the ones that are given precedence in Islam. So this is just another point uh, to, to, to show actually the status of, the, uh, uh, of women. Okay. How, wherever you put it is actually much higher. Move on. You've got a point as well. I actually wanted to come back to the point that Azir Hanif Sahib made about um, the primary domain of the woman being um, in the home, as it were. Uh, but yet she is allowed to um, gain an education and work, etc. Um, I just wanted to get some clarification. Uh, according to Islam, when is it permissible um, for, for a woman to, for example, work? And are there any types of uh, employment that, that should be avoided at the same time? Yes, uh, a good question. Uh, perhaps going into a different subject matter, but talking about the, the, women, the woman itself, who may be your wife? and who doesn't have children or who has older children and wishes to go out. Does, there, there's no restriction and again there's no hard and fast rule on this. Uh, these are decisions which couples have to make and I find that since they don't talk through these things before they get married, when they c are confronted with them in marriage, they become uh, stumbling blocks in some cases. 
So uh, the discussion should be opened up as you're trying to find a good life partner. What do you desire in life? Do you desire to be mainly a homemaker? There are some women that just love to, to be homemakers, and this is not Islamic. This is found in Jewish culture, in Christian culture, in Hindu, and all these cultures talk about the role and the primary rights of women based on their biology, their mentality, and the facts of sociology. So in African culture, you have the, the same situation. But uh, the, the question is, is so valid that the, the couple themselves should talk this out, not society make these decisions. We can't tell women when they're allowed to go out and get educated and go out and work. You know, the, the situation and circumstances determine that. And the personality of the individual will also decide uh, if, if it's, it's good for you to work as a police officer or as a lawyer or a doctor or whatever it may be. Okay, so we're talking about careers here, and some people, slightly moving forward on here, some people say once they get married, they want to develop their careers, and they don't want to have children necessarily straight away because of their career. So what kind of guidance do we have on that? Is there any uh, injunction in the Quran or Hadith that's saying that you shouldn't delay childbirth because of financial reasons? I will sub, what guidance do we have on that? As far as finance is concerned, Quran has categorically mentioned that if you fear poverty and you don't take children, that is not allowed. Allah feeds you and the, he will definitely feed your children and next progeny as well. Uh, we need to just move on. Are there uh, any people in the audience who actually do have kids and how, does that, how has that affected your life? Uh, Najah Sal, let me turn to you first. Uh, yes, by the grace of Allah, I have, uh, I have three children and um, I think that, I mean, it's, it's, it's very joyous for those who have had children basically about, you know I mean you've got your own work are we talking about career as well how is it in terms of that? work and stuff yeah I mean we always you know there's never enough uh, hours in the day mm -hmm. you always want to spend that extra extra time with uh, you know with, with your children because you know they're, 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 a, they're a part of you they they really are a part of you so you know an extension of yourself as well so in many ways you don't you know you you, you want to spend more of that time with them to look after them and to nurture them and to care for them as well but obviously you have a responsibility to, to provide for them which you do by Allah's grace and stuff anyway. So um, just briefly, I mean, how does, uh, for people who say that they don't want to have kids because they want to carry on their career, how, how would you I mean, I think that? We, we talked earlier about growth of an individual, and I think part of one of the greatest challenges of life is, uh, especially in your working life, is having the ability to multitask and to be resilient. And there's no better resilience that can be developed by someone that is working long hours and being successful in their working life while um, managing a healthy work-life balance and spending the time that needs to be spent at home with the children. Okay. Right. Okay, that's a great place to finish on. Uh, we just need to take a short break, but join us uh, afterwards in the second part of this program. We'll be going to be discussing what happens if things don't always work out fantastically in your relationship. What can you do and how can you get over these problems as well? So join us after this short break. Zindabad, Zindabad, Ahmadiyat Zindabad, Ahmadiyat Zindabad, Ahmadiyat Zindabad, Ahmadiyat Zindabad, Ahmadiyat Zindabad. وقت تھا وقت مسیحا نہ کسی اور کا وقت وقت تھا وقت مسیحا نہ کسی اور کا وقت میں نہ آتا تو کوئی اور ہی آیا ہوتا मैं नाता तो कोई और ही आया होता Welcome back to the show. Today we've been discussing marriage and in the second part of this program we're going to be looking at what you can do to ease out some of the problems that come about when you first get married. We've got our expert panel with me here in the studio and also our audience as well. So let's get straight down to it. Um, Azhar Nivsab, if I could start with you, how do you keep peace and harmony going about in the household? 
There are some very, uh, you could say, basic principles to keep in mind. Uh, number one, the respect that has to be maintained in these relationships. As I talked about in, in one answer, that this is a, a relationship based on equality. N neither the man nor the woman can attempt at any point to dominate uh, this relationship. Once that starts happening, you'll find that the, the conflicts will be created. <laughs> so, you know, in, in all decisions making, in the process, there should be s some e equality of, of uh, exchange.